fallen leaves. Adorn my knights! Wind strike! Everybody stand back! Right here, right now. Emerge. No turning back! Nothing lasts forever. The long-awaited Yaimiko is finally here, and in this guide, we're not going over the basics as I pretty much covered the basics in my C0 video. Instead, we're going in-depth into her kit, playstyle, weapons, and potential teams. So without further ado, let's get into it. Hello everybody, my name is Habisam, I make Y4 meta content, and with Yaimiko, the first thing I want to talk about is her talents. Yaimiko's normal attacks has a very short range compared to other many Catalyst users. She has the shortest, if not pretty much the same range as like Klee. What is unique about her is her charge attack that delivers lightning strikes vertically in whichever direction you choose, which can potentially hit an enemy twice if they get staggered by it. The only thing is that for me personally, it takes forever to come out, but you can animation cancel it as soon as the fox travels to the right side of Ye. So if you kind of want to make Ye a main DPS, you kind of want to take advantage of this animation cancel for her charge attack because it does deal quite a bit of significant damage, especially in a group of enemies. So moving on to Yaimiko's elemental skill, this is the focus of her kit because she can be an incredible off-field DPS and that's how she is marketed by Oyoverse. The range of her elemental skill, the best way I can put it, it's the same kind of circle you see where the Pyro Flower is or the Cryo Flower. Pretty much if you replace Yaimiko's turrets with the placement of the Pyro Flower, that little circle is the range, the maximum range of her elemental skill. For the optimal placements, pretty much you can put them in the center so you can cover it kind of like the circumference range that we talked about. That way you can also get consistent level 3 damage over turns. Or if you have time in your rotations and you want to kind of space them out more, you can go ahead and space them out a little bit more. That way they can cover more of a range. But usually in like Spiral Abyss, I'm, trying to, I'm just trying to spam and just get out of her element skill as much as possible. To cover like the maximum range, you can go ahead and just settle for level 2 damage and cover all of that range but I wouldn't see why you would do that but it is an option the best thing is just to spam 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 get them out of the way put perform a little triangle because the thing about her elements of skill is that it takes forever to get them out you're spending a total of about one two three four seconds just to spam them all out and get them out as much as possible hi editor hi Sam here I know I said four seconds when in reality it's like two, two and a half seconds max. Of course, this is best case scenario where you just spam out all of her totems. So worst case scenario, maybe three seconds to put them all out and switch to another character. So in reality, it turns her duration from 14 seconds to 13 seconds of her totems being on field before you have to put them out again. Her totems only get five energy particles and potentially you could get some more if you space out your casting of them. But it's not worth it, like I just said. You already spent too much time spamming them out on the field, so th there's really no point. Also, the best and easiest way to spam out your totems is if you go left, right, left, or up, down, up again. This method also works well if you're on mobile. Just be careful not to like put them really close to each other or put them in the exact same spot because they do have a chance of destroying each other if you do the placement a little too precise of your previous totem. It can happen, especially if you're trying to spam them out right away, and especially if you get stuck in front of an enemy like you're seeing on the screen. And if you look at this talent, whenever you cast your elemental burst, like it resets the cooldown for each little totem that you destroyed. And I think this is a bad part of our design because you know what this means? This means that we're going to spend even more time trying to freaking cast all of her totems on the field. One, two, three, and then again. And again, again, and then we I can finally switch to another character and do whatever we gotta do. So now that we know that kind of information, to sum it all up, you basically want to start with the Aimiko in your rotations. After you cast all of her elemental skills, depending on what team you kind of have going on, you do have the option of using her burst right away or saving it for later. If you use it right away, then you're gonna have to recast her elemental skill. And this would be the case, especially if you have like the Witsa, where you have to take advantage of that 10 second window. If you save it, after you cast her last totem, you basically have 11 seconds to kind of rotate through your team before you either have to cast her elemental skills again or wait till the last second and use her elemental burst so that way she can consume every totem and give you the most amount of damage that she can. And just be careful not to lose track of time, especially on the Spiral Abyss, because it does really feel bad whenever you cast her elemental burst and you only see one additional lightning strike. Personally, it just hits harder. It's like, ah, oh, dang it, I didn't do it in time. Something to note is that as soon as you cast your elemental burst, it does destroy the totems right away. So if you wanna wait till the last second before your totems disappear, you can totally do that with your elemental burst and take advantage of all three Tenko Thunderbolt damage. 
Also, be careful. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm 99.9% .9 sure. The elemental skill has no iframes. So if you're trying to dodge an attack, just dodge regularly. Don't use your elemental skill or you will get hit. The fun is over. So with her playstyle and talent out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the artifacts and stats. Okay, so all the information I'm about to give you is going to come from the Yaimiko Mains Discord. So shout out to them for providing this information. And I will link their Discord in the description below so that way, if you're interested, you can join and ask them more in-depth stuff. For the artifacts, the best artifact combos you can put on Yaimiko is a two-piece Shimanawa combined with either a two-piece Gladiator or a two-piece Thundering Fury. It really depends on what characters and weapons you have on your team that make like one combo beat out the other, but the difference is so minimal that it really doesn't matter. Every other combination of artifacts that I have here on the screen is decent and okay depending on what you want your Yameko to be. But the first two that I suggested will give you the most value overall. I will say that it is not recommended to farm Thunder and Fury domain because it is not resin efficient. And even if you do end up getting a good two piece, there's really not that much of a difference in increase over a double attack percent artifact combo. As far as stats go, for the Sans piece, you want attack percent. Some of you are probably thinking, why not Elemental Mastery? Unlike other characters like Mona and Raiden, where energy recharge gives them an extra elemental damage boost as a whole. Yaimiko's talent only boosts up her elemental skill, which means that if you overinvest in elemental mastery, it gives you diminishing returns real quick and makes it not worth it. Let me show you a comparison between my Yaimiko with an attack percent sense piece and with an elemental sense piece. Also, depending on your substats, even an energy recharge sands would be better just because of the cost of her burst. For the goblet, you want electro damage bonus. For your circlet, you either want crit rate or crit damage depending on what you need for your Yaimiko. For your substats, you want to prioritize crit rate and crit damage, of course, but also energy recharge. Depending on your team comp or what electro battery you have paired up with her, at C0, that 90 energy cost is huge. And 22 seconds is a pretty good amount of time to try and charge it back up but it still costs 90 energy. My suggested energy recharge is around 130 to 160, depending on who's a battery for your team. You could go a little bit lower, especially if you have Raiden Shogun on your team. But once you get your energy recharge situation under control, after that, attack percent followed by elemental mastery would be the two subsets to go for after these two. So now let's talk about weapons. For weapons, I'll give it to you nice and easy. Kaguro's variety obviously is her best in slot. The question is, is, is it worth going for it if you're like an F2P or you're a low spender? And the answer is pretty much no, unless you just love the aesthetic aspect of it. But the Witsith is overall her second best weapon because no matter what buff you get, it will help out her damage output. The only thing about the Witsith is that the buff only lasts for 10 seconds and it puts even more pressure for you to spam her three elemental skills and burst quickly in order to take advantage of that little 10 second window. The weapon only starts to fall off if the fight is long or you have to do a lot of rotations. The third best weapon would probably be the Skyward Atlas if you're able to get it or if you have it already. Next would be Solar Pro and it works well in teams that prioritize Yay on field such as Yay Hyper Carry Team because in order to keep the Solar Pro buff 100% uptime, you do have to do some normal attacks. And the only reason why you'd want to do normal attacks with Yay Mako is if you have her more on field and you have this team centered around her like a Hyper Carry Team. But other than that, if you're only looking just for a main crit rate substat weapon and you're not doing yay on field, then the weapon to go for would be the Lost Prayer, especially if you have attack buffers such as Sarah or Bennett. Now for free to play, the best weapon has to go to the free weapon that you're able to get this patch. The energy recharge helps you fill in that gap of trying to get energy recharge from her substats, and it makes it to where you're able to focus on substats like crit rate and crit damage and attack percent in order to boost up your yay Miko instead of like energy recharge. And that's pretty much it for the weapons. Let's go ahead and move on to the teams and suggested partners. For Yaimiko teams, since she does have a slight energy recharge problem, you are basically forced to having to pair her with either Raiden Shogun or Fischl. So right away, that's two slots taken up. And let's see who we can pair up for the last two slots. For Mono Electro team, you can add Sarah as a third slot and whatever animal unit you want, such as 
Jean, Sayu, or anybody that can swirl off field. You can also make like a hyper carry Yaimiko team, which pretty much works the same way as Hyper Raiden. And it's all centered around buffing up Ye with Bennett, Sarah, Kazuha, and just going really hard on her burst. Now, I do want to say because of Yaimiko's playstyle and mechanic, she is another character that really doesn't need Bennett or Kazuha. For example, a team that I really enjoyed and felt fluid was putting her in an electro charge team. In this electro charge team, I preferred Fischl over Raiden. For the Hydro unit, my pick was a 100% uptime burst Mona. That is my recommendation if you're able to have it. And I really don't see a lot of people suggesting pairing Mona with Yamiko. I've seen Kokomi and Shincho. And honestly, those are okay, but I recommend Mona over Kokomi or Shincho. And don't get me wrong, you can settle for Kokomi. Her Hydro application is pretty good and consistent. And she also is a healer. And Shincho, I guess, if you're able to just uh, somehow activate his swords by normal attacking with Yaimipo or Sucrose or whoever is on field. But anyways, the fourth slot should obviously be an animal character such as Sayu or even Sucrose. But overall, like my favorite team, and I know I already said that you don't need Bennett, and the team that gave Yaimiko the attention and focus around her was Amona, Yaimiko, Bennett, and Bishop. Now, because I really don't see a lot of people recommending pairing Mona with Yaimiko, I am going to make a dedicated video on those two paired up together. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell so that way you don't miss out on that video. The last thing I will say about her teams is you can go ahead and run an overload team with her with like Bennett and Shangling. But the only thing about that is if you already have a well-built Shangling and Bennett and you're trying to do an overload team with Yaimiko, like there's really no point. You might as well just save your Shangling and Bennett for another team, like a national team or whatever other team you're running. That way you don't put all your best characters in one team just to try to make your Yaimiko work. That's pretty much it for all the teams. Now let's go ahead and move on to constellations and if I think Yaimiko is even worth pulling or not. First, I just want to state the fact that Yaimiko's power is heavily gated by her constellations. I mean, just by looking at the first one, it shows you that Hoyoverse knew Yaimiko is going to have an energy issue. And just like Apple, by creating a problem, they can easily sell you a solution. And the solution for Yaimiko's energy problem is her constellation one. Of course, it's going to be a huge quality of life upgrade, which heavily decreases the amount of energy recharge that she needs. C2 gives her roughly a 25% damage increase. And the range is good too. C3 increases her skill level. C4 makes her electro support c5 increases her burst damage and her last constellation is the best one but it sucks that it's a c6 especially comparing her to somebody like raiden shogun where the defense shred constellation was on her c2 overall are her constellations or just pulling her in general worth it the honest answer is that as of right now yaimiko is actually waifu over meta there's like no team she improves that like other characters don't do already if not do a better job than her even for the mega whales having c6 r5 doesn't improve any speed running teams such as like a hyper carry raiden team because putting yaimiko on that team instead of sarah actually slows down raiden and that's due to what we talked about earlier about how much time it takes for her to cast all of her elemental skills and then using her burst and then doing it all over again but again for me i don't care about that wife over meta gamers just pull for aesthetics and honestly all the wife over meta gamers will try to find a way for yai to work or we can just leave it to the meta leaders that will eventually find something and this kind of reminds me of how Mona used to not be played or how she was considered bad for a while. But then look at her now. She's shining great. And I believe I have the same hope for Yaimiko in the future. If not, I will find a way to make her work just like I did for Mona. Anyways, that's pretty much it for me. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment down below on how you're using Yaimiko or if I forgot to mention anything. I love you all so much. And remember, wife over meta. And I'll see you all in the next video.